Hi, I'm Shubhi. Hi, I'm Ishan. And today we are here to talk about guest checkout transactions and its solution, Alt ID. Uh, Ishan, all of us are quite aware about the term tokenization now. Can you help us understand what guest checkout transactions are? Sure. So, tokenization came into picture because earlier when customers were storing cards at different websites or apps where they were transacting frequently, merchants were storing the card number itself. But since that was not the most ideal way, considering that there are chances that someone will get compromised and the card numbers will leak out there, tokenization as a framework was brought in to solve for that problem. But there are still a lot of users who do not like to even tokenize their cards or who do not were not even saving their cards. In any merchant, if you will see only 88 to 85% of customers actually save cards, so even if there is a use case, right? If you're ordering from a food delivery app, mm -hmm. there's a use case but you are going to some uh, like an insurance merchant where you will probably be only using it once a year. You might not want to tokenize your card. In those cases, in such transactions where the customer is not willing to give his uh, consent for saving a card mm -hmm. or is doing a transaction very infrequently, such transactions are called guest checkout transactions. Right, yeah. right. Uh, so, Ishan, we're also hearing about a guideline pertaining to these guest uh, checkout transactions. Can you help us understand how a merchant transaction will be affected if it's a guest checkout transaction? I think for this, we have to go into a little bit of uh, why this, what is, what changed in tokenization mm -hmm. and what remained and what is, uh, you know, the new solution that is going to solve it, right? Some history behind this. So essentially, if you see the whole ecosystem of card payments, card number becomes a very key identifier in whatever back office things happen, right? Uh, for customers or for merchants or for uh, from an experience point of view, it was only about saving card so that repeat you do not have to enter the whole card number mm -hmm. but behind the scenes whether it's your refund processing settlements and all these card numbers is a key identifier used in all these processes now tokenization what tokenization did was replace that card number with token and essentially now that rather than the card number flowing across systems you have a token number which is flowing across systems which is uh, you know difficult to identify even if it is leaked right almost impossible to identify but there is still this, you know, 10-15% of transaction where the customers are not even tokenizing the card because in India, the regulation states that you have to get a customer consent to tokenize even the card, right? You cannot create automatic tokens. And hence for these 10-15% of the transactions, the card number still remains as it is and is being used for refund, settlement and all those use cases, although the user is not seeing that card number on the merchant, right? Mm -hmm. So there had to be, if, if, if the whole intent has to be followed uh, and the card numbers have to be completely replaced from the system where the card numbers do not flow through various systems, this 10-15% of transactions have to be catered to. And hence, this alter ID or alternate ID as a solution has come about to solve for this use case. It was a little complex to solve given that you know, uh, card number and all these back office systems, they already process, uh, you know, millions of transactions every day, hence it is difficult to change. But now uh, the ecosystem, card networks, payment gateways all have aligned to come as uh, for a solve for uh, these use cases and it's called alternate ID. Right, Ashan. Yeah. So basically in the payment ecosystem, no party would be able to save the card number and that's how alt ID is the solution for that. Yeah, so as uh, the very important term, there is no entity except okay. for say the entity who has issued you a card. So there are essentially two entities who you issue you a card. Issuer, mm -hmm. that is your bank and the card network, Visa, MasterCard, Rupee, Diners, etc. Right. So now any other entity for any purposes cannot save card, right? So even if it is an acquirer or a payment gateway, merchants were any which way is not doing it post tokenization guidelines. But even other back office or uh, behind the scenes players cannot save it for any uh, use case post uh, implementation of these guidelines. Yeah. Right, Ashan. Uh, so there's one more use case. When you talk about travel management companies like airlines, GDS providers, uh, how will this affect them? What is the basic impact on their transactions? I think interesting that you man, uh, mentioned this because we have to understand why travel 
is being talked about a lot mm-hmm. with respect to uh, cash checkout solutions etc so you we see we have to go to the again to some there is some context behind this and essentially the context is that airlines have been a big user of card ecosystem you know cards have been used in airlines uh, perhaps uh, since ages right uh, because 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 of the essential nature of the business it, it is typically spread across geographies you know you are flying from country a to country b and but the booking can happen from any other third geography also so the essential nature of business made transfer of money very cumbersome mm-hmm. but with in, but, but cards and cards introduced a you know way to solve for some of the challenges when it comes to confirmation of payments reconciliation for all these parties and what resulted is that solutions for travel management or travel companies or airlines are very customized you will not see such examples outside of travel right so hence you know all the tokenization came in but tokenization as i always say was a replacement of card number so it was something that you know uh, tokenization had been introduced in west um, before india all the india has adopted faster and you know we have more tokens perhaps than other geographies other merchants of other geographies but all tidy is a, and or guest checkout transaction um, you know they they don't have outside geographies don't have such regulations where you know card numbers cannot be stored at all so card numbers and tokens can both exist in parallel but in india we know that the regulations is moving towards that card number should not exist only should not be passed through only it should only be in the hands of user or with issuer acquirer uh, issuer and uh, card network not with the acquirer itself now what that makes is that you can't store card number for say processing travel transactions airlines were storing cards and sometimes using that for moto card transaction purposes and all that right the moto is where you actually can tra- process the transaction without customer initiating it merchant initiates that transaction so there were things like you there there are a lot of b2b payments which happen on card rails interesting in travel mm-hmm. in most of the other spaces b2b payments are happening on by a regular payment transfer layers like nft rtgs or checks uh, right but travel industry b2b payments are a lot through cards hence there is an impact which cash checkout has on you know every travel merchant Uh, when it comes to they interacting with their lines not necessarily with respect to customer so say customer still can tokenize his card while he is paying by any ota or something but when what happens between a travel management company and airline how does those transaction uh, work that will have a major impact with this all tied guideline because they will have to change the way they have been doing transactions and that change will impact multiple systems at their end hence it is important uh, Uh, that this sector has to be focused when uh, talking about guests right uh, rightly put ashan so why uh, we now understand why travel is such a unique case in terms of all tied uh, you mentioned pass through and non pass through transactions can you just help me simplify what exactly is a pass through and a non pass through transaction yeah so uh, pass through non pass through essentially are the way transaction happens so sometimes say if you are a corporate user say you are employed with company xyz and they have taken uh, some some travel management company to book for corporate travels of their employees right now one way is that you will get corporate travel cor- you know they will partner with a bank and you will get some uh, cards uh, as which can be used for your business travel uh, airline hotel booking right now when you are using those cards one way is that you are directly made to go to the airline portal and you book the travel on airline portal itself right so in this case the merchant on record who has received payment from your card is directly airline no such tra- such method of doing transactions are called pass through transactions whereas in cases where i pay to the agent and then the agent is paying via any b2b method to the airline there the merchant on record is the travel management company itself so that is non pass through transaction so if you will see your card statement at the end of the day in a pass through transaction you will see the beneficiary merchant as being an airline in a non pass through cases the beneficiary merchant will be the travel management company company there are a lot of things that change with respect to how refunds are handled how cancellations are handled because in airlines if you cancel then you have to pay a penalty right um, most of the cases uh, how refunds are handled how chargebacks are handled all these things change and because these things change 
the and that way you do transactions also changes that's why you know there are different ways to handle so travel management company will handle guest checkout in a different way whereas an airline has to handle travel uh, this guest checkout transaction in a different way and the reason for that is that there are another uh, organizations a set of organizations which are involved in this they are called gds or travel networks like you know bigger ones like navitair amedus etc who manage a lot of inventory for these airlines and also do payment systems so these are global companies and these global companies will have to adopt to new guidelines and hence the airlines uh, it becomes much more complex for airlines and it is required because there most of the airlines business is coming via agents hence there is a lot of uh, changes that even airlines have to make to ad- to make sure that they are accepting payments even when uh, the, you know the guest checkout uh, uh, guidelines kick in and all tidy becomes the norm for such transactions right uh, thanks for simplifying that ishan so there are a lot of use cases where travel management companies airlines do not engage in otp based flow so how do you think uh, there's a difference in that flow and how do you think all tidy impacts that authentication mechanism whether it's otp non otp remain the same it is only the way information is sent to the issuer or the card networks that changes so the decision to whether to do an otp on transaction or non otp these are these rest with the issuer and the use cases which have been in existence today will continue as uh, well there is no change in those journeys okay sure yeah. so i think that was uh, that was really helpful i understand now what alt id is and what are the different impacts in different sectors uh, can you explain me what a general payment flow would look like in terms of alt id when it comes to uh, you know in practice yeah so there are two things here one is the general payment flow and we will probably also give some insight to our merchant partners on how what will be the changes that they have to do so see uh, f- again from a user point of view nothing changes in their life right they enter the card number and the transaction goes through and they decide not to and every time they come back and if they have not consented to tokenize the card they will have to enter their card number right. so nothing changes from a user point of view but yeah there are changes from a ecosystem point of view on how this card number is handled so one now the card number right at the time when the user has entered merchant will pass the card number or if there is a payment gateway who is collecting the card number on a merchant website they will have to pass that card number to the network first which is visa mastercard and they will provide back a alternate id as it called a temporary token so to say called alternate id which will be given back to the payment gateway or the merchant whosoever is certified to do this operation and then now the merchant or the payment gateway has to pass this to their respective acquirers or payment aggregators for for the transaction processing now from a system perspective everyone now in respect of wherever you know in api's card number is a field the alternate id will flow look, look similar but is a jumbled up thing right which is will be which will flow through different uh, acquirers networks etc network will finally trans because network has issued the alternate id they will translate it back to a card number which will can be used uh, by the issuer to do otp authentication etc another thing network will also give something called as a cryptogram along with this alternate id so and that cryptogram will also have to be used in the transaction processing right so combination of these two will have to so there is some as you can uh, see right there are some integration changes and some api changes that the merchants or the payment aggregators or gateways whosoever are involved in transaction processing will have to make uh, that is uh, one and uh, uh, you know merchants will have to make sure that they are complying with the guidelines because payment gateways aggregators travel networks all have to be regulatory compliant but merchants will also have to make sure that their partners or if they are certified to do this operation themselves are complying with these guidelines and doing this the right way post the deadline fix right right uh, you'd also mentioned about alternate flows like emi subscriptions so how do you think that will be impacted when we have alt id in place see again uh, i think there's lot has already changed with tokenization coming in right the ecosystem adopted it very well and uh, we have not seen any disruption when it comes to any emi journeys some small changes have happened but most of this again will not be from a customer point of view uh, uh, it will be more you know merchants and payment gateways who will have to work and make sure that the uh, 
wherever they were using a token or a card number previously for such transaction they start using alternate id that 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 is the only change that they have to right do. so basically uh, you said that nothing changes for customers uh, can you explain what is in it for the merchants to why they should actually go for alt id apart from the, of course the compliance reason i think uh, you know we have been a unique market i would say and uh, unique in the sense in, the, in a good way right uh, because the decision to tokenization was itself a very very uh, you know refreshing in the way it was taken and as a result we have seen that market has changed so much it 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 helps merchants get rid of any liability also right it's just not uh, about compliance it's not not just a tick mark it is about you know what kind of risk do you want to take right if there is a solution which exists where customers can use their card number still you don't have to take the headache of storing it processing it and make sure on how you are handling such sensitive data right they say in security reduce your surface area right that's the best way to handle uh, security right so if you want to reduce that surface area itself and not just just take the sen- those sensitive details and reduce uh, you know your handling of those data points that will help you in the long run in your uh, investments towards security and obviously compliance is uh, there but i think from overall point of view it will it is helpful for merchants itself that tomorrow there is any unfortunate incident that happens with a merchant you are not worried because you will not have card numbers in your system even while for processing i understand that merchants are not storing card but sometimes even when you are processing guest checkout transactions it might some some ephemeral uh, state of that card can reside in your system and all that but with this you'll be able to pre- prevent all of that and make sure that you know for your customers in a way it is all customers right so your customers not uh, if if after a deadline you are not able to process transaction for people who want do not want to tokenize and you are a merchant whose use case does not require merchants to tokenize then you will be losing out on business if you're not following the guideline because the law of the land will become like that right so yeah. basically alt id is just making our lives easier it is more secure and of course yeah. it is also compliant Absolutely. uh can you explain just pay's role in ensuring the compliance and you know how the transition from a alt non alt uh, alt id based flow to a alt id based flow is i think uh, you know that ways we always have been you know are uh, you know everyone in the payment ecosystem knows that you know just pay has been when it comes to matters of compliance regulation we always have uh, been at the forefront and taken it with both hands that's i think our uh, point of view towards this has been as we were one of the first to launch it uh, with one of our card networks and eventually now have uh, you know spread uh, our uh, coverage to multiple card networks and for our merchants they have been seamlessly migrated Uh, we are also working with our payment gateway partners to make sure that they are ready and uh, to you know get uh, to absorb the information that we will be sharing with them as part of apis etc and uh, you know that work is uh, continue is continuing and for pay- merchants whose payment gateways are ready there are uh, no complications etc they are already live so this uh, uh, you know journey for us started uh, way back but now i think we are seeing acceleration because the deadline is nearby and uh, you know uh, i i would say that that uh, uh, you know and and this will continue right we will keep working with the various partners to make sure that all of our merchants are compliant and they don't have to do the heavy lifting rather than uh, you know they, uh, they they can continue focusing on their business and we'll take care of this right so i think that uh, just pay is making very easy for all the merchants and other entities uh, you know involved in the payment journey i think that's really commendable Uh, thank you so much for your time ishan thank you thanks for viewing uh, i hope this was insightful and if you have any more queries any doubts you can mention in the comment section below